I recently uploaded a video talking about how I'd purchased a pair of jeans, the first piece of clothing I'd purchased in two years. What I didn't tell you in that video was that that pair of jeans also represents the end of a no-buy year. I have now successfully completed a year-long no-buy and in today's video I just wanted to share with you some of the lessons that I've learned over the last year of buying pretty much nothing. I want to be really transparent with you with my reasons for doing a no-buy year and my main motivation, if not my only motivation, was to save money. Now, when we went into the first lockdown just over a year ago, it was pretty obvious that sadly, some people were going to lose their jobs. Now, my job entails going into NHS buildings, which for the most part over the last year has not been at all possible. So I was a little bit concerned that my job could go and nobody in my industry would be hiring and therefore I wanted to protect myself as much as I could from potential financial ruin. And so I thought to myself, if I could get myself to a point where I was saving 50% of my take-home salary, then for every month that I did that, I could almost buy myself a month of being out of work. It made sense in my head, um, you know, because. I just wanted to make sure that I would be okay if the worst happened. Now, unless you're some kind of prepper with a large stockpile, of course, there were still things that I needed to buy, but my no-buy rules were pretty simple. I could only buy things that I absolutely needed, and I wasn't allowed to buy things just because I wanted them. So over the last year, I did purchase food, but no takeaways, no uh, fast food, no restaurants, no meals out, etc. And um, I did buy cleaning products, and I did buy personal care, personal hygiene items that had run out. I wasn't allowed to just buy, I don't know, a new bubble bath because it smelt nice. I could only buy bubble bath when the one that I had had run out. Hopefully that makes sense. I think one of the biggest things I'll take away from the last year and doing the no buy is just how much money we can spend on nonsense, on things that we don't even realize that we're buying, those kind of little impulse purchases. Now, I have been doing what I would call aggressively saving for the last three years because I'd set myself quite a large financial goal of saving a deposit for a house. So, you know, I've not been being frivolous with my spending anyway, and yet, by doing the no-buy, by not shopping, by making savings in other areas, I have managed to save an additional £300 a month. How is that even possible? I mean, admittedly, I've probably saved a little bit on fuel by not being able to kind of go anywhere, but £300 a month, that is that's three and a half thousand pounds a year. What was I spending it on? It wasn't clothes, it wasn't makeup, it wasn't skincare. That to me is just a crazy amount of money. So I really will beware of those little, oh, I'll just, oh, it's only three pounds, oh, I'll just get that, and really think about whether I need it because that extra three and a half thousand pounds could come in incredibly handy um, for all sorts of reasons. So yeah, I'd definitely beware of the impulse purchases. So the second thing I'll take away from this last year is that feelings cannot be fixed with things. Now, I know looking back, uh, certainly in my younger years, I definitely would shop to distract myself from how I was feeling. So feeling sad, buy a new dress. Don't feel pretty, buy some more makeup. Um, feeling bored, let's go online, have a scroll on my favorite websites and see what we can buy and just distract myself from the feeling. But buying things never really works. It just merely distracts you from the feeling at the time. Now, the last year for most of us has been filled with lots of unpleasant feelings, but there is absolutely nothing I could have purchased that would have fixed any of that. Now, I can't say that after a year of not shopping that I am any better at dealing with those feelings. It's probably something that I will always have to work on. And whilst I don't think there's anything wrong with owning things or uh, with shopping or, or with even merely distracting yourself from a horrible situation or a horrible feeling, I know now that if I find myself shopping that I will ask myself why. This thing that I want to buy, do I need it? Um, if I don't need it, do I want it? Do I love it? Do I feel that this item will bring some value to my life? And if it doesn't fill any of those things, if I think that I am shopping because I'm bored, then it's probably not a good idea. It's probably best to just step away, 
and maybe see friends deal with, um, you know, deal with those feelings in a different way. So the third thing I'll take away from the last year is that saving money has lots of benefits over things. Now, I've long since believed in having an emergency fund, especially as I've been self-employed at times in the past, and I know how vital that money can be. But over and above having an emergency fund, I've never really valued uh, saving until the last couple of years. But doing the no buy this year has really consolidated what I already felt about saving. It can offer you so many more benefits over and above just being able to replace the washing machine if it breaks. Firstly, it offers a much greater sense of security. So if I was to lose my job tomorrow, obviously it would be awful, especially in the current climate because it would be really difficult to find another job. But by saving money and living within my means, then it massively reduces that anxiety, that worry, that panic. Because, you know, by having a really good safety net from saving money, then you know you'll be okay. Secondly, it also offers you a much greater feeling of control. Now, let's say, for example, you're in a job and you absolutely hate it. Now, most of us would never do this because most of us just keep putting ourselves through the pain to keep that money coming in. But if you've saved money, if you've not been shopping so much and you've got a nice cushion, if you couldn't stand that job for even a millisecond longer, you are in a position that you could potentially say, up yours and quit. And even though you might never do it, knowing that you could makes you feel so much less trapped and it feels so good. Thirdly, it gives you options too. So let's say a business opportunity came your way, but it would mean that maybe for the first year, you'd be earning a lot less. Well, you might decide if you've saved money, if you've got that um, bolster again, that you could take that risk, that you could take that opportunity and pursue your dreams. Or perhaps if you've been saving and you just get used to living with less, then you might be able to take a lower paid job that perhaps would offer you more fulfillment or maybe give you more time to spend with family. Staying away from social media helps. Now, I was quite late to the social media arena. I was very resistant to joining anything, but I was hounded by a couple of my friends and eventually I caved and joined Facebook. And when I first joined it, I absolutely loved it. Like I spent so much time on there. It was so nice reconnecting with friends from all over the world, from friends I'd met on holidays as a teenager, from, you know, catching up with old school friends. It was lovely. And most of the time people just posted general pictures of what they were doing, you know, some of my friends from school posted pictures of their children and it was really sweet and lovely and just quite nice. But then over time, it it changed and people were posting pictures of their new house, their fancy new car, um, their incredibly expensive watch and it became just this place to show off and I just didn't really like it. And then Instagram is that on steroids. So I definitely think that it's helped over the last year to stay away from social media, which was a decision I made due to how I was feeling uh, with the lockdowns and so on. But I just think that when you don't concern yourself with what other people have and what other people are doing, then you're much more content with what you have and what you're doing. You don't need to compare yourself at all. And I, I think that that leads to less shopping and more happiness. Whilst I won't be doing another no buy for the next 12 months, I'm fairly confident that my shopping will be fairly minimal. Whilst I've been really lucky to keep my job this far and fingers crossed will hopefully continue to do so, no one knows what could happen in the coming months. I think as people keep saying, these really are unprecedented times. So I can't imagine that anything that I could buy now would feel at all important if in a few months I'm thinking about how I'm gonna pay the bills. So I'm probably gonna keep that shopping really, really minimal. Also in the last year, by doing the no buy and by using other money saving strategies, I ended up saving 60% of my take home salary. That is crazy to me. I, I would never have even thought that that was possible, um, you know, if I had just run the sums on paper. So it, it's crazy how much all these little things can add up. And I think that doing this and being able to save that amount of my salary each month is probably going to change my relationship with money and shopping forever. So it, it, in some ways you could say that it's been life-changing. Okay, so if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. As always, I love to hear from you guys in the comments. Have you ever done a no buy? Are you considering doing one? Do you think you need to do one? Are you wanting to save more money? I always love to hear your experiences. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye now. Mwah.